Good afternoon. My name is Paras Taha and I'm here to present my work on learning embedding space for clustering from deep representations. Let's start with the introduction. Clustering is a fundamental unsupervised learning problem whose goal is to group similar objects together. It is an important area of research and its various aspects such as distance metric, feature selection, grouping methods have been extensively studied. K-means and GMM are two very popular clustering algorithms. These algorithms perform clustering using distance-based similarity measure, typically on low-level features like raw data or gradient-oriented histograms. Spectral clustering is also a very widely used algorithm. It does dimensionality reduction using Laplacian spectra of the distance matrix and then performs clustering on this new feature space. These traditional clustering algorithms come with their own limitations. First of all, in high dimensional data, distance metrics are not a very good similarity measure as the distance between the points start to become relatively uniform as the dimensionality grows. Also, scalability can also become an issue. Spectral clustering is very difficult to scale to large data sets as full Laplacian metrics need to be computed, which is computationally intensive. Given widespread success of deep learning, Large number of recent studies on clustering have been focused on learning good representations of data using neural networks. The problem or challenge in this setup, however, is that clustering being unsupervised learning problem has no supervision signal to guide the representation learning process. Because of this, neural networks are unconstrained to preserve the desired properties in the learned representations. Therefore, to learn clustering suitable representations, different regularization techniques are required. A large number of solutions to clustering problems using deep neural networks have been proposed with an explicit clustering loss with or without unsupervised loss. Now let's talk about some notable related work. Existing deep clustering algorithms can be categorized into three groups, autoencoder based, generative models based, and direct optimization under clustering loss. Autoencoder based approaches use an autoencoder to learn low dimensional latent space and then fine tune this uh, latent space to make representations more clustering friendly. DEC, DBC, DCN, and DEPIT are some examples of this approach. Generative model based approach use generative models like variational autoencoders and GANs to extend the clustering task to generating samples from the clusters. In case of the third category, that is direct optimization under clustering loss, only clustering loss is used to optimize the deep neural network. No unsupervised learning loss like reconstruction loss are uh, used. Joule, DAC, IMSAT are some notable examples here. Now let's talk about the challenges with these existing models. Direct manipulation of the autoencoder layered in space with clustering loss may cause the corruption of feature space as the clustering loss cannot always guarantee the local structure preservation. Preserving local structure is very essential to clustering as it contains discriminative information that is important for distinguishing different samples. Another challenge is with the complexity of the models. GANs being a complex model are very notorious for their optimization difficulty. Also, in unsupervised setup, hyperparameter tuning is very difficult as no ground truths are available. Another challenge is that the representations learned may have severe overlapping between their natural clusters, and so we need to learn the representations which have some degree of separations between their natural clusters. Now, let's talk about the proposed solution. In the figure in this slide, we can see that the encoder and the decoder represent a normal autoencoder, but we can also see another neural network, the representation network, which is attached to the latent space of the autoencoder. We aim to find a nonlinear mapping F that is from X to Z, which is the input space to the autoencoder latent space, and also G, which is the decoding function from the autoencoder latent space Z to x prime which is the reconstructed input space we then find another mapping h from z to e 
from the latent representation space to the embedding space which is parameterized by this representation network. The goal of our approach is to learn the embedding suitable for clustering by simultaneously learning the above mentioned mapping. Finally, the clustering suitable embeddings will come from the embedded space E. Now let's talk more about the representation network. In the representation network, we use student's t distribution to measure the pairwise similarity in the latent space Z and we define this probability distribution P as shown in the slide. Now let's talk about the degree of freedom for this probability distribution P, which is a high degree of freedom for P as it allows more space to model the local structure and the smaller separations of the clusters in the latent space. In our experiments, we set the degree of freedom to twice the dimension of the latent representation space. Our experiments also prove that the degree of freedom twice the dimension of the latent representation space gives the best performance on all the datasets. We again use student's t distribution, but this time with degree of freedom 1 in the embedded space E and we define a probability distribution Q as shown in the slide. As Q is limited by its low degree of freedom to model the local structure in the embedding space E, it approaches the distribution P by increasing the intercluster distance and reducing the intracluster distance in the embedding space E. The weights of representation network are now learned by minimizing the cross entropy between these distributions P and Q as shown in the slide. It is equivalent to reducing the entropy of the distribution P and also reducing the divergence between the distribution P and Q. This cross entropy loss function now has two effects. Due to the intercluster strong repulsive force that's caused by the student's T distribution, the clusters are now pushed farther away and the overlapping is minimized. As P is also not fixed during the joint training process, optimizing this cross entropy loss regularizes the encoder to scatter the points in the latent space Z in such a way that the entropy of P is minimized. Now let's talk about the optimization process of this model. The optimization process consists of uh, two stages, pre-training and joint training. In the pre-training stage, we train the autoencoder with the cross entropy, the construction loss for a few epochs, and that provides a good parameter initialization for the encoder network as it starts to learn the salient features of the data distribution. After the pre-training, the points in the latent space are valid feature representations for the input samples. In the joint training phase, we introduce the representation network. We update the parameters of the encoder, decoder, and the representation network in this phase together. We update the encoder parameters with a weighted sum of the autoencoder reconstruction loss, that is LR, and the representation network's cross entropy loss, that is LE. We also introduce a weighing coefficient and we update the encoder parameter with this weighted loss. The responsibility of the representation network is to promote the separation of clusters in the embedding space. So we update the representation network parameters using only the cross entropy clustering loss. As far as the decoder's role go in the joint training, it is to reconstruct the input samples from the latent space even when the encoder's weight are updated and distorted a little by the joint loss. We update the decoder's weight with the reconstruction loss only. Now let's go through the experiments. We use two datasets for our experiments. One is an image dataset that is MNIST and another one is a text dataset that is Reuters. The MNIST dataset consists of 70,000 grayscale handwritten images of 28 by 28 pixels with 10 classes. The Reuters dataset consists of 685,071 articles and we compute TF ITF features of 2000 most frequently occurring words to represent all the articles. We also use four root categories for this data set.
We process both the data set by normalizing each example to lie between 0 and 1. As for the evaluation metric, we use unsupervised clustering accuracy, which is a popular evaluation metric for deep clustering algorithms. Here, N is the total number of samples, LI is the ground truth label, CI is the cluster assignment obtained by the model, and M is the set of all possible one to one mapping between the cluster assignment and the label. We report the quantitative comparison of our model on two datasets in the given table. We also present reported results of a broad range of recently proposed models for comparison. They are grouped according to the three different avenues of approaches as we described before. The network type, which is fully connected or convolutional, is also reported. Here we describe the summary of the result in the table before. The proposed model achieves 83.62% ACC on Reuters, which is the highest reported clustering accuracy among all the complete models, defining a new state of the art for this data set. The model also significantly outperforms all the autoencoder based approaches, both convolutional and fully connected, on the MNIST dataset with 97.08% ACC. IMSAT reports the highest clustering accuracy on MNIST with 98.4%, but it is also notable that it doesn't perform as well on the Reuters dataset with only 71.9%. However, the proposed model achieves a consistently good results on both the datasets, if not superior, suggesting suitability with both image and text datasets. And finally, despite being relatively simple, the proposed model achieves very competitive not superior results with complex and hybrid models. Now let's discuss about some of the aspects of the result. Here we see the visualization of the clusters as the training proceeds. We use TSNE visualization to observe the latent space C, which is the upper row, and the embedded space E, which is the lower row, for a randomly sampled subset of MNIST dataset. We observe that in the first row, the clusters are separated, but they still lie close to each other and are not very dense. This is the latent space of the autoencoder. In the second row, in the embedding space of the representation network, we see that the natural clusters are separated very well and are also very dense. This shows that the embedding produced by the representation network are very much suited to perform clustering. To demonstrate the representative power of the proposed approach as an unsupervised model, we choose different numbers of clusters K and observe the samples from those clusters on MNIST digits. In the figure, each row corresponds to the samples grouped by our approach as a cluster. On the top image, we set K equals to 7, while on the bottom image, we set K equals to 14. We can observe that for k is smaller than the actual number of class, which is 10, digits with a similar appearance like 4, 9, and 3, 5, and 8 are grouped together. When k is larger than the actual number of clusters, some digits are divided into subgroups based on slight visual variation. It can be seen that the straight and tilted digits like 7, 1, and 6 are separated into new clusters. So in the conclusion, we propose a simple yet effective clustering model that simultaneously learns both valid feature space Z and the embedding space for clustering E. We also introduce a novel architecture by incorporating the representation network to the autoencoder framework. We show how to jointly optimize the autoencoder with the representation network experimental results so that our model achieves superior performance on Reuters dataset among a broad range of recently proposed models. On MNIST dataset, it performs very competitively if not with the most superior results. Thank you.